Hi, I'm Gansham Gilani. I'm one of the oncology fellow at SUNY Upstate Medical University in Syracuse, New York. Uh, today we'll talk about comparative survival analysis of uh, neoadjuvant versus adjuvant chemoimmunotherapy in the management of uh, early stage, stage 2 and 3 uh, resectable non-small cell lung cancer. Um, so the management uh, going back uh, for early stage lung cancer is uh, surgical resection, and that typically follows with some sort of systemic therapy. So far, for two decades, we have a data from less meta-analysis, which shows uh, the adjuvant systemic therapy with four cycles shows uh, significant benefits in regards to progression-free survival and overall survival. Then last couple of years, we have a data from Empower 010, which showed benefits of uh, adding immunotherapy uh, following chemotherapy in those with uh, PDL1 greater than one. And, and then latest, we have a data from Keynote 091 trial, which is uh, showing us benefits of uh, immunotherapy irrespective of uh, PDL1 status. And here, the chemotherapy use was not mandatory. So if somebody is frail and if they uh, cannot go for chemotherapy, you can just go for the immunotherapy. Now, uh, since then, uh, confirmatory trials and early phase trial done to look for immunotherapy benefits in new adjuvant setting, and there were a few trials. Uh, some of them are NEOSTAR trial, LC-MCS trial. Those look for the efficacy and safety of immunotherapy new adjuvant setting, and then that those immunotherapy subsequently uh, got tested in uh, phase three trials, which is, uh, you know, we have CHECKMATE 816 trial, which just look for the new adjuvant setting of nivolumab. Then we have perioperative trial, which is um, Asian trial, look for durvalumab. Uh, we have neotorch trial, which look for the toripolumab. And then we have recently Keynote 671, which look pimerolizumab in again, new adjuvant and adjuvant setting. And all of this trial significantly improved the event-free survival and progression-free survival, along with major pathological response and complete uh, pathological response. So that leads me to do analysis to see that, because we do not have any head-to-head -head comparisons of new adjuvant chemoimmuno versus adjuvant chemoimmunotherapy, and our abstract focus with the retrospective analysis from NCDB and we reviewed all patients, about 2 million nocturnal patients, and we had, among those 27,000, we had, um, you know, uh, treatment-related informations after uh, extracting those patients uh, with exclusion and inclusion criteria. We removed patients who had uh, non-stage uh, 2 and 3 cancers, and we also removed uh, those patients who had previous radiation use and also those who had other uh, cancer diagnosis in their lifetime. So our analysis shows significant improvements of survival benefits when the uh, immunotherapy was used in neoadjuvant therapy as compared to it was used in the adjuvant setting. And we also compare, uh, we merged the group. We had four treatment groups, neoadjuvants. We divided in neoadjuvant chemo and neoadjuvant chemo IO. Same thing we did in adjuvant setting, neoadjuvant, uh, sorry, chemotherapy and adjuvant chemoimmunotherapy. And when we merged those uh, groups to just the neoadjuvant and adjuvant therapy, the statistical significance was lost. That means the benefits was more derived from the neoadjuvant setting with immunotherapy use. And uh, one way to explain that, that could be because of a large number of uh, antigen exposures prior to surgical resection. The advantage of neoadjuvant therapy, it uh, targets the micrometastatic disease, which is eventually will lead to a distant metastasis, and it also improve your uh, reduction in the tumor burden, so your path, a complete response, and R0 resection rate is also in improved with the neoadjuvant therapy. Still, we have unmet needs because there is no large trial that had to had compare that neoadjuvant chemoimmuno versus adjuvant chemoimmunotherapy. That something should be explored into the bigger trial. We also would like to know that just the neoadjuvant immunotherapy is enough versus they also require new adjuvant and an adjuvant setting because immunotherapy doesn't come without side effect. So if we have a comparison data of new adjuvant versus perioperative immunotherapy in this setting, that will help clinicians to decide which way to go for uh, systemic therapy options. And it also 
prevents the cost constraints and also the side effects from immunotherapy. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.